What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. Part 18 of the walkthrough, continuing things through the lakes of the Urnia. We have a couple of different areas we're going to hit. So the first is right here. This is called the Temple Quarter. We can't see it yet, but it'll unveil once we get over there. So drop a marker right over there. Uh, then we're going to drop a marker right here. We're going to drop a marker right here. And we're going to drop a marker, I think it's like right in here somewhere. So those are the four spots we're going next. And let's boogie. Head on out. Hit up these spots, do some stuff. I'm going to be fighting another dragon this episode, and I'm going to be... I'm going to give you all the super in-depth dragon tutorial, because like 90% of the dragons in this game you can beat using the same strategy, and I know a lot of people uh, struggled on a Gil because I kind of just clobbered him, so I really want to I want to talk more in-depth about the, uh, the head-baiting strat and how I use that, so. First thing we'll do is we'll get the grace. Still need to be a little bit closer for the Temple Quarter icon to show up. Should show up. There we go. All right. So now that we can see Temple Quarter right here, uh, what you want to do is go just south of it, like right around here. Put another marker. It's going south of that icon itself. There's a lot of like random enemies around here, but there's actually only like one piece of significant loot, and it's in this chest that's right here. This is the Ice Rind. Pretty nice one-handed axe. It has that Horfrost stomp skill that we picked up in the previous episode, so you know, if you if you want to dual wield axes and have Horfrost stomp, well, there you go. Uh, besides that, yeah, there's stuff like this. There's lots of Latrinia's lilies here. There's some uh, Michaela lilies, but it's just, you know, stuff you pick up on the ground. There's no, like, loot loot to get. All right, now this island there is going to be a shiny, but it is a runner. And what I mean by this is certain shiny balls like this one, they will run from you the second you get close. So the best way to deal with this, in my experience, is just gonna be using a Kukri or a throwing dagger or something else. Uh, a bow would also work, but trying to chase these guys down with melee does not work well. And they don't seem to run when you hit them with the throwing knives. They're just going to kind of sit there. If they do run, you'll be able to throw a second one out. Uh, but that gets a stops barrier, which we are absolutely going to want that for an upcoming area. Now we'll be putting it out something like this, uh, but it allows us to spell parry, which is super, super useful. Heading on over to the third marker we made. Now you can kind of already see it there, and there is a dragon waiting at that marker. So what we are going to do... Well, first thing we're going to do is just summon up some stuff to distract him for now. We want to grab some loots, because the key we need to get into the academy is right here. Alright, while the summon takes care of him for a little bit, I'm going to talk more in depth about dragon strategies. Now, with dragons, the main thing you should do is bait the head. What I mean by this is you are baiting the dragon to either bite or stomp, and then you're attacking the head. Now, pretty much every dragon in the game is going to have a couple of key breath attacks. This one right now is doing its one unique attack, and now that that thing is dead, it'll look at me. So, the main attacks that it's going to do, we have the wind-up breath, which it's doing right now. That one is going to sweep across. That one's pretty standard. You know, it's always going to be a sweep. It's going to do the flight one, where you just run to your left, and you'll pretty much always be out of its range. And the last one... Well, right now he's doing a special attack instead. But the last one is just a straightforward breath. And at that one, he's just going to kind of rear back and then roar. And the best thing to do is to just run backwards to avoid it. Now, beyond those, some of the dragons will have more unique things. Like, he'll have his little thing that you just saw him doing. Um, but the head strategy will work on uh, pretty much all the dragons. So, as you see, he's stomping. I roll when he stomps. And then I whack the head. And if you're starting to see, this is the this is the regular breath. So this one we're just going to run on back. It's going to do a special breath. This one we're just going to dodge. Now he's doing the wind up breath, so we can run along the head. And now he's going to do a stomp. Roll for the stomp. Give him a whack. This is easier if you're right on top of them. Otherwise, you can kind of, you know, 
look for there's there's different cues. Like you can see that he's rearing his head back. So because of that, I know that even if I can't see him directly, I know he's getting ready to do that stop. Um, they also most dragons will have a thing where they'll fly up in the air and then try to come down and hit you. There's a head swing. There's that flame, so let's run away. You can see how this fight, ultimately, it's all about just positioning. It's about running the right way for the right breaths. He's going to do that one again, so I run to the left. There comes the stomp. see how his head's kind of moving, and that's how I know that a stop's coming. Even if I'm not in front of him, I can kind of, you know, I can, I can get that from the cue. The cue that his head is moving on back. There's the regular grab. I'm going to run away again. He's going to do his special magical crystal. He's going to do this breath, so we're going to run this way. I think this is this is a really good representation of why I think, for the most part, the dragon fights are pretty easy. Once you know what things to look out for, you know, there's very minor attacks that are actually going to be a threat to you. So this is the fly woman. He does this. Either roll forward or roll backward when he's about to come down towards you. That's another really common one among all the dragons. Now he's doing that breath. And I really like this over trying to fight it on the horse. So it didn't run far enough that time. That's okay. We have enough time to easily get off a heel. I'm going to try and bait out a stomp. And he's down. And we didn't even get any, like, big beefy attacks or criticals or anything like that. We just, we, we played to the dragon's moveset. And this is exactly how you're going to be able to beat almost every dragon in this game. Um, a couple of them are going to have more unique breaths, and we'll, we'll cover those when we get to it. But that same strategy where, you know, the, the long flyy breath I run to the side, the straightforward breath I run back, the sweeping breath I run up to his head, that will work on a majority of the dragons that we are going to fight. So with that done, let's go over to the last marker we made that's over there. And kill these things if you want. Um, we're about to hit a grace, so it really doesn't matter all that much. And here we go. So you are going to want to pop a key for this. Uh, this is a full-on cave, so a bunch of different pieces of loot we're going to get in here. Uh, there's a, a rune, runes thing, rune arc. There's a couple different loose items. The most important thing is a mage spell. So I will say there, while there's different upgrade mats and stuff we're grabbing in here, uh, the main reason to go through this place is something called Terra Magicus, which is a rather unique... Uh, utility mage spell. It's not going to get used all the time, but under certain circumstances, it can allow you to do really silly amounts of damage. So, start of this is pretty easy. We're just going to go on through, kill some rats, grab some loot. Nothing really, uh, that's a concern for the start of this place. We just kind of cruise on through. This is a good, good spot for Crystal Cave Moss. Um, now, this is our first room where things get a little bit tricky. You can see over there, there are a bunch of dudes. Those are all sorcerer dudes. But we're going to sneak up in this one first. All right, they're all looking, but I don't think we're in combat yet. And this is going to be the hardest part of this place, because if all these dudes notice you, it's going to be Spell Spam City. 
There we go. See? Got them all over here. They're like, what's that body? And then boom, one big hit and they're all down. I think there might be one more. That might be it. It's just the five. I don't even write how many there were. Well, I guess that means it's not much of a concern. Uh, so here, get more. There should be one that's off to the left. This guy. Now this one's a little bit bigger. But circle around. Get that backstab. Uh, and then we're going to go on in there. Now there's a... Uh, just to, to show what we're about to do over here. There's some more stuff, and we're gonna I believe this is where we continue. Yeah. First, we can go around where this guy is at. Oh, where'd he go? Right through here. Run on down. Grab some more loot. And if I remember, I believe it's a stonework key. Yes, there we go. So now we're gonna head back out and take the other path. Um, we get the key, then we'll return to the more well-lit room. Right. We're going to open this and just creep along and right over... I believe it's right here. There should be an invisible wall. Yep. Right there by the cave moss. We're going to go on up, kill this guy. Go on up and get this chest. Uh, crystal staff isn't too bad at 48 int. Um, in general, the crystalline sorceries, I personally don't think they're very good. I only found two in my initial playthrough, so there might be more out there, but I did not think they were very strong when I tried using them, so I think there are much, much better staffs to work with. And now that's the big boy, and the big boy, he is probably the one challenging thing in here. He's spamming casting. He, uh, he does do like a gavel thing, which is like a big close range move. That's the gavel. But as long as you survive the gavel, um, he's not an issue. Just watch out for the gavel. Go ahead and pop this chest open. Okay. Break their table to teach him a lesson. And in here we have the Crystallines. So we already fought them once before. As a reminder, they are weak to blunt. So, you know, just pull on out something that's blunt and give them a good old wallop. See, that's that's a, uh, a crystal sorcery right there. But, like, just kind of look at it, like... Look how much one of those little things hit me. Like, eh, that ain't good, man. And so you can, she's actually doing a great job of showcasing my exact problem with the crystalline sorceries. They look cool, but they don't hit anything. Like, I didn't try dodging, I didn't try healing, I just kind of sat there and let her do her thing, and they largely did nothing. Now you get crystal release, so if you're a mage, you can... Now you can try it and see how useful it is for yourself. So that's the return to entrance, don't hit that just yet. Now we're going to go up here and get Terra Magicus first. What is that? Looks like my guy... Is it the shadow? It looks like my guy has like a half stash. Is it blood? It's got to be blood. Oh, no, I would not give my character a half stash like that. And now we have Terra Magicus. So this is a pretty interesting spell. It puts down an aura on the ground. It's fairly large. Uh, and while you're in it, you get, I believe it's a 35% damage boost to your magic. So 
obviously very potent, uh, but also some very unique circumstances where you'd use it, you know, the idea being that you're about to fight something out in the world, and you can cast it and then start spamming spells from far enough away. Uh, but it's, it's kind of tricky to work with in boss fights, just because most stuff isn't going to let you stay inside your magical circle and deal a bunch of damage. Uh, but anyway, with them dead, we are going to do uh, Tetsu's Rise next. So let's head on over here to the northern Lyurnia Lake Shore. Should have got this in a previous episode. We're going to mark up some more stuff. So we have Tetsu's Rise. That's right here. We're going to do that. Um, after that, there's a couple of like kind of garbage loots over there. We'll grab some garbage loots. I think they're over here. Um, let's see, then we go to the ravine and the road along the manor. We already got that. We'll get a grace here, and then we'll go like all the way up to there. So. And this is another uh, memory tower, so spellcasters, you're about to get another slot. is a three wise beasts puzzle so three turtles that we got to kill um, to make the turtle spawn of course you have to hit the tower itself but this one's pretty easy I think so right up here interact with that seek three wise beasts one of them is right over here to the east just off a cliff so kind of go into the east and that just look down. Actually, kind of hard to see at nighttime. I might make a day again. There's a drop down, and is that it? There he is, right there. Go on, give him a boop. up here. Uh, the next one is going to be up in a tree. Turtle in a tree. And we're going to just kind of ride in a circle around and we should see him. There he is. I want to use a throwing knife. The last one is just kind of hanging out in the open. He's right over there, just past the tree. Killing all three turtles will despawn all of the crap around here that was... Well, it didn't attack us, but it was trying to, would have liked to, we didn't give it the chance. Let's go on top and get our memory stone. Okay, uh, we can just work back down here. Let me that. Well, let's head on out to the other areas that we've already marked out. I'm going to kind of ride on out there. And there's nothing that's like a big concern out here. It's just a couple of like loose loots that are dangling around, but you know, they're, they're on the way to where we're going, so I'll, I'll pick them up. Typically, I'm not going to go out of my way to grab stuff like this that's inconsequential, uh, but I would have considered this out of my way. So this one, there's a bunch of these little poison thingies. Um, you just run right up and grab the old things. And then we ride on over to number three, and there should be some grease that's like right around here. I don't know where these dudes are all hanging out. There it is. Sleepy time grease. Still haven't tested the mechanics of sleep fully. And this music almost sounds like there's a death bird out here that I may not be aware of. It sounds like death bird music. It sure sounded like a death bird. But we're gonna go on over here to get a grace. Um, 
I know there's one a little bit later. Anyway, after you get that grace, uh, that's just a, a spot here. It doesn't really connect to anything, but I'm just going to run on down to the shack down here. Now, where we're going right now, um, you may remember when we were helping the one NPC, the uh, Volcano Manor Lady, that she talked about how the lift was defunct and there was a secret path that you could take to get up to the Altus Plateau. Uh, we are going where she is talking about. However, we are not going to go up that path yet. And I would not recommend uh, any of you decide to go up this path on your own. The reason being that once you, I mean, and technically we could, we could clear this area, um, but by clearing this area out and getting up top, we can, we can clear it. But once we get up top and we're actually into the Altus Plateau, that will trigger a transition where a fight down south instead disappears temporarily and is replaced with a much higher level boss down south. We're going to kill both of those bosses in good time, uh, but... You don't want to remove the lower level fight. We want to make sure that we can do that fight before we go after the bigger boss, just because it's, you know, it's worthwhile. Uh, so anyway, now that we got that, we're going to teleport back over to Sorcerer's Isle. Dogs are going crazy, and I really, really hope the recording isn't picking up dogs barking. Okay, so we want to go check here do, do, do. we have Celia crystal tunnel we're gonna go to that last we already picked up that oh we gotta go here we gotta get the grace that's over there um there should be a death bird by the scenic isle where's that here like isle death bird i thought the death bird was over here somewhere we didn't actually find the death bird, but I'm just remembering that because that music made me start thinking about death birds. Um, but, so we need to hit this for sure. And then there's the mausoleum. We can bring that down and then we can do the cave. And I might do a quick run around for that death bird. But we'll, let's, let's go through this stuff because um, we can always hit the death bird at the start of the next episode after I've had time to confirm its exact location as opposed to just wasting time and running around in the darkness. Of course, watch out for these guys. They're deadly as ever. Smith and Stone. Alright. Where is that grace? Here's our grace. Uh, we almost came over here in the previous episode just to get this when we hopped up to get our halberd. Um, there's another disappearing act ball. Right around here somewhere. I'm trying to listen for him. And this is another one of those ones that likes to run away, so... There we go. And we hit it. in a bad spot. Let's see. Wow. I can't believe it let us get that close. But okay. There we go. Got shield bash. We're gonna run on out. Uh, now, much, 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 much earlier we actually grabbed a, a stone out here. Just kind of as a reminder. I'm gonna bring this mausoleum down while we're out here. It looks like he might take his sweet ass time, so I'll just I'll talk about how to do it. So if you wait long enough, um, eventually that mausoleum wanders over this way. And when he does, all you need to do is just go down these a little bit, and then you'll jump right off of them. And he is really taking his sweet time. Oh, do I really?
really want to wait for him. Come on, big boy. You know what? Let's, um... I'll go grab the next grace site while, while he slowly meanders his ass over here. Which, I mean, you don't even have to do the mausoleums now. As a reminder there for duplicating remembrances. Um, the ones that have the bells on the bottom. I haven't confirmed this myself, but, but what people are saying, the rumor on the street, is that bell on the bottom means it's an early boss remembrance. And if the bell is not on the bottom, is a later boss remembrance. Instead of the elevator, just drop down and get that. I'm literally every elevator in this place we're not taking. We're just going to be rolling and getting loot. Honestly, it's just good advice for all of these things in general. Go. So we'll get the mausoleum and then we'll... Because I know if I don't get it, someone's going to be confused. So, better just show it. We now have that site, but we can't fast travel while we're underground. So, we got to head on up. And hopefully the mausoleum is over where we want it to be. Mm, he's getting there. He's getting pretty close. Just like a really derpy puppy that takes a long time to go where he's supposed to. So I tried jumping from this onto him a couple of times, and I could never make it. Um, I've heard people say you can do it, but I mean, I, I tried like 10 minutes trying to make the jump, and it just wasn't happening. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. We're not doing that approach. We're doing it the other way. Come on, get over here. But the other thing, um, which this is more of a pain in the ass to do, but. All you need to do with this one is you can see those crystals, and we need to pop those. So you could shoot at, if I can actually hit it. You could shoot at those crystals, and you could pop them off with a bow or a spell or something. Um, it's kind of tedious to do that. I I would just suggest you instead do the uh, the hopping route because he's already getting close enough. We should be able to jump over. Get down probably one more. Ah, I think I can make this. Let's go for it. Oh my god, you asshole. Well, that's that's what you're supposed to do. He's just uh yeah. Yeah, he's he's being that guy right now. Go up there and get my stuff. We're just going to go down in the uh, the Celia Crystal Tunnel. I'd rather focus on that, get it done. Because this guy, I mean, that, that's how we've done it. I know for a fact you can do it. He is just being a stubborn mausoleum. If I had been like one gravestone down, I probably would have been fine. That didn't even feel like a long jump. It felt like it was a far distance jump. But anyway, beyond the point. Yeah, you just you just hang out. If I had been like, um, I don't know. As you can see, you can get you can get pretty far down a couple of these. I thought that one was gonna be safe. Maybe I had to start from there. You can see a bunch of people have died trying to pull this off, but you know he he basically comes into here and he gets like stuck, and you just climb on, and then you break those white things, and then it sits down. But anyway, down into the Rayo Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. Let's get this done. Yeah, I don't need to worry about not healing. Um, as a reminder, people always ask me why am I two-handing. Um, with most weapons, two-handing will prevent you from bouncing. I don't know if I'm gonna because mine's heftier anyway. Let's try the axe. This should give a good example. So, 
You see that thing back away. See how, see how when I attacked, I like, bounced off there? Now watch this. Two-handing. So, with a bigger weapon, it's not going to be a concern. Because you know, this already has heft behind it. But if you're using something lighter, just two-hand your weapon while you're in here, and you'll be fine. Grab that. Get some light. You can actually see around here. Alright, now this is a very, very tricky jump that we're about to do. Uh, where's my baby? I want to see if Blunt works better on these guys because I didn't have one on the other build. Pretty sure it does. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just... Let's give him a whack. I hope we can kill that one or ignore it. I'll just kill it now. Why not? So, um, the loot here, in particular, is going to be a smithing stone 3 and a sombering stone 3. But it's a series of trick jumps. So, if you're struggling to do this, you know, don't worry. You're not missing out on anything crazy. Uh, but you can see from the bloodstains, a lot of people struggling to do this. So this last one is a little bit trickier because you have to get a bit of a running start. So I'm going to teach you all a trick. What you're going to do is jump in place and hold circle. It's like that. It doesn't look like anything happened, but what I'm doing is I'm hitting X, holding circle, and then I land. Now the second I press forward, I am sprinting. See that? So what I effectively did is by, by, uh, you can do the same thing here. Jump, hold circle. And see that? By doing that, you start from a complete standstill. And when you move, you're sprinting. Now the main reason for that is otherwise, you can see how it takes a minute to get the run going. It's like, instead it's just hold it and then sprint and jump. So very, very, uh, we'll call that the cowboy tech. But very useful. I didn't come up with it. A very, very useful technique uh, for when you're trying to get tricky jumps like that. Uh, so anyway, we did the summer three, summer two down and run towards the little mini mage for some loot behind him. And as you kill these guys, just pick up all their goodies. This is mini mage. Oh god! No! Oh my god! No! Oh. After warning y'all about it, I got caught myself. All right, back in we go. Oh god! I'm fat rolling. Oh, now you get to see how I get through areas when I've died. It's good to die in the walkthrough at least a couple times. Otherwise, people start thinking I'm infallible and I can't make mistakes. So the place like this, I'll just run through. These guys are slow enough that I'm not worried about them catching up and grouping up on me. Um, these ones are waiting for a fight. So these ones I'm actually going to kill. Yeah, like that guy, as far as I know, I'm pretty sure he just keeps mining. It's crazy to think that guy just killed me. So anyway, grab the loots that are in here. Getting some nice upgrade mats. And another mini mage causing trouble. So, elevator is going to be last. Instead, we're going to run through this whole lower area, killing dudes, and grab a loot. So, 
Smithing stones. A juicy backstab. Similar to before, we're going to roll off. Sombering stone. You can see there's a whole other area down there we're going to be getting to in a little bit. One of the longer caves, but definitely, definitely one you're going to want to do. So we get a ball bearing at the end. Okay, um, we did that. Down at the bottom. That, where is there? So we're going to go over there first. Looks like we gotta go around to get to it, so grab the smithing stone too. Uh, grab this. Make sure that guy has already wandered before you cross this, because the last thing you want is to be crossing this and then suddenly get hit by Mr. Micro Mage over here. I'm just turning that on. Uh, that's the elevator that takes you to the very start of this place, so I don't need to ride it up, but I absolutely want to have it activated, because now, if for some reason I was going to die, if that guy killed me right there, it doesn't matter. You don't need to ride elevators up. Once you have sent them down on their way, uh, you've already fulfilled the condition to use that shortcut. So, there are a couple of dudes here. Stop it. To put on my real sword. I'll take this off. I need some of the faster knives to throw. This one should have another marionette as well, I thought. Okay, it's the next room that has the ambush marionettes. Some more smithing stones, and then he's gonna do the archery bullshit. Well, there's one that's gonna drop down from above, and that's who I'm trying to. That's who I really want to take care of. See, there's a whole slew of enemies left. Definitely one of the longer caves. Big boy. Chase that one down. He's trying to... Oh, shit. Die. So that is going to be the last path we go down, the one that the staircase leads to. Shatter Earth, that's that spell that guy was using. Not very good. And we're gonna head on in this way. And another elevator, which we also aren't going to use. 
in favor of rolling on down and getting more little tucked away loots. Uh, the boss is, you guessed it, another crystalline. Ooh, hang on, Mr. Somber. Don't want to forget about you. So yeah, y'all y'all already know um, how this, this works. You know, you go in, you beat it, and it dies. For your efforts in this lengthy cave, you get the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing, which turning that in to the lady all the way back at the round table will now allow you to purchase an infinite amount of Smithing 1 and Smithing 2 stones. Now, by the end of the game, you'll be able to buy as many of you want uh, as of all of the stones with the exception of the final max tier stone. There are a limited number of max tier stones. But anyway, wrapping things up. Oh man, these episodes just, they, they creep up and get longer and longer every time. Uh, but as for where we're going from here, I'm going to confirm that Deathbird location who's like, uh, I thought he was here somewhere, but I'll find out. Uh, but anyway, our next episode, we're going to focus on getting through all of Academy Gate Town. So this whole section here. And then after that, we're going to make our way into... Ray Lucaria. After we get all the way through Ray Lucaria, um, well, I guess we could go do this stuff now, but we have this northern area up here. Bunch of different things to do over there as well. So I don't know. Maybe I'll do that before Ray. We'll see. Some stuff over here is kind of like this. This area right here is a pain in the ass, but we'll figure it out during the prep. So stay tuned. We'll have more coming your way.